That was fighting for gay rights, mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were was killed at Stonewall. Nobody was Nobody killed. Was Latrice Royale is one of the most beloved queens from the franchise. If you watch season four, there was no doubt that if Latrice had made it to the finale, just based on sheer presence alone, she could have potentially won the crown. Unfortunately, that wasn't the path she had. Instead, Latrice's story was an example of rags to riches. Granted, you could argue that pretty much every queen that enters the series is a rags to riches story, but specifically with Latrice, there was a certain level of vulnerability that we saw with how she shared her vulnerabilities with personal stories such as her arrest, ultimately finding community with the drag world who took her in shortly after getting out of prison. This tragic backstory, contrasted by her nurturing personality, made her an instant fan favorite in those early days of the franchise. Yet, at some point along the way, there was a small period of time where her legacy seemed to be a little tarnished by a terrible reception from her run on All Stars 4. But before we start, you know, the other day I wasted hours trying to cancel a streaming service subscription so that I'd be able to save some money, but they were making it close to impossible for me to be able to find the cancel button. It made me realize how important it is to really get on top of my expenses, especially since I'm saving up for future projects. That's why I'm happy to say that this video is sponsored by Rocket Money. Rocket Money is the app that you you need to achieve your financial freedom. Personally, I love using Rocket Money to keep my finances in check because with everything going on in my life, it's not always easy to keep track of all my spending. That's why Rocket Money safely and securely identifies those reoccurring charges being made at your expense, letting you cancel them right from the app with just a couple taps. So no more dealing with annoying customer service calls. Yet it doesn't stop there. Rocket Money also helps me lower the cost of my bills. All I have to do is upload a photo of my bill and with just a few clicks, they negotiate it down for me. It saved me a a lot of money over the past few months. Mind you, if you're curious, you can try it out for free at no cost. Yes, you heard that right, for free. So take control of your finances today and go to rocketmoney.com slash greengay to try it for what? For free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash greengay or click the link in the description. Now let's begin. After season four aired in 2012, Latrice was on top of the world. In fact, she won Miss Congeniality that year, which was voted on by the fans. Another indicator of the love the audience had for her. Although, in a way, it was kind of short-lived when you think about it. Because literally, just a couple weeks after they filmed the finale for season 4, Latrice went on to go film All-Stars 1, which went down in infamy for the dreaded twist of putting the queens in pairs. Pretty much every single contestant, aside from Chad Michaels, was considered to be robbed queens on this season, because it was really hard for any of them to come out looking good. I mean, we only had 6 episodes, the challenges aside from maybe 1 or 2 made no sense, and lastly, having 2 people leave everything every week just made it so that none of the queens would be getting any special send-off. In Latrice's case, her and Manila's All-Stars 1 run consisted of them winning the first challenge, being in the bottom two the second episode, until going home on the third. It felt almost insulting, since at this point, we didn't know if there would be another All-Star season in the future. And if there was, fans had already made up their own rules about how it'd be impossible or unfair for them to invite someone that had already been on All-Stars to compete a third time. This of course would not be the case at all, yet regardless Regardless, it made it all the more tragic to see so many queens be wasted on the first edition of All Stars. One thing you can't deny is Latrice's talents were so well rounded to the point that she checked all the boxes. Yes, her charisma was through the roof, along with being able to succeed in many areas of the competition. But probably her most impressive skill was the way she truly embodied whatever song she had to perform to. I mean, in a time period where many people were looking past the big girls, Latrice came in absolutely changing people's minds on the capabilities that queens would with a bigger size could accomplish, especially when it came to performing on the main stage. So by the time she goes into All-Stars 4, it had been a total of 5 years since Latrice had competed on All-Stars 1. At this point, the fanbase of Drag Race had more than tripled in size since 2012, and now All-Stars 4 was going to start airing in December of 2018. So most of the newer fans, while they knew that Latrice was a legendary queen, sort of looked past her in terms of what she'd be able to deliver. I mean, with this cast of queens, it'd be difficult not to take notice in the others. Yet for the people that were fans of Latrice, this was an exciting time. If you didn't know, Latrice Royale was actually asked to compete on All-Stars 3, but rejected the offer mainly due to knowing Trixie Mattel was going to be competing too. Which is sort of the funniest tidbit I know, because the idea of queens rejecting their all 
All-Stars invitation because they have a feeling that someone like, let's say, Trixie Mattel or Shea Coulee will be there. Making them think that the odds are stacked against them is interesting to think about. It also sort of surprised me, since it meant the production really must have had a whole list of gimmicks when it came to casting All-Stars, even prior to any of them being done. I mean, we can theorize that since Latrice and Manila were invited to All-Stars 3, but ultimately one of them rejected, then most likely it's then that they decided to invite BB Zahara Benet to instead have the gag be a returning winner. Yet I wonder if there was at some point a production meeting where they considered having BB return as the first winner and Latrice and Manila both within All-Stars 3. Now that would have been sensory overload. Subsequently, contrary to popular belief, Latrice had a pretty good start on All-Stars 4. I mean, yes, there's rumors that apparently she dropped her flag a few times during her talent show, yet it wasn't shown in the final cut. What we did get to see was impressive enough as is. Plus, knowing that this was something she had been doing in many of her shows while touring around the world gave it an extra bit of spice since she was finally cementing it into her streak. There's also those that argue that on episode 2, the top two should have been Valentina alongside Latrice Royale, since Latrice had really showcased herself as one of the stronger performances from the challenge. Ultimately though, she was placed safe, and safe would sort of be the way she seemed to be playing the game moving forward. Even when it came to the runway package, while there was a couple of really big standout moments like her latex look, or the one she did on episode 2 that is one of my personal favorite ways she's ever presented herself on the show, unfortunately, everything else she delivered was just sort of basic? And I say that with hesitation because I realize each queen puts a lot of time and effort into getting ready for the show. Yet when it came to Latrice and Manila too, there was an added pressure to them in particular, especially considering they were among the first queens to compete on three different seasons, along with being mega successful. So when it came to runways, they sort of needed to be blowing us away. Manila did succeed in this, but Latrice got critiqued by fans for essentially wearing the same gown but different colors over and over, leading to a feeling that she either didn't put a lot of care into her runways, or that she simply was out of her league in terms of the concepts that her competitors were bringing to the runway. Like Monet Exchange and Mo Hart, who literally had just finished competing on season 10, being the freshest two contestants in the cast, yet still presented drag that left us gagging. What is essentially the nail in the coffin in terms of Latrice's run on All Stars 4 is of course episode 4, where she ends up in a group with Mo Hart and Monet to do an improv challenge. Yet they both end up overpowering Latrice, getting most of the talking time on the sketch, leaving Latrice to fade into the background. According to her, she allowed the other two to talk over her and not intervene because she wanted to be a team player. Which always baffled me, cause you'd think that after All Stars 1, the last thing that would be on her mind would be to have more regard for the team than herself. It also came right after the week prior during the Snatch Game, where Latrice did a bad job with her character but ultimately blamed Gia Gunn's behavior for why she couldn't stay focused in the challenge. Reminiscent of her original season where during her first Snatch Game, she had gotten upset with Jiggly and other queens behaviors for sort of distracting her from the challenge. Essentially, in terms of what we see in the edit, there was constant excuses being made, which of course wasn't sitting well with the fanbase. Unfortunately, it would only get worse when Latrice was eliminated by the end of the episode. Now, what's probably the most controversial moment of her All-Stars 4 run was during the Return of the Queens episode, when she reunites with everyone being able to finally confront Mo Hart about the fact that she chose her lipstick. Only Latrice had a completely different view of things from the rest of the world. In her mind, it was super unfair for Mo to have chosen her to go home over Monet, even though Monet had already won a challenge along with delivering arguably better showcases during the episodes. The conversation was elevated even further, with Latrice saying, that the sheer fact that she's a legend within the drag world should be reason enough for her to be kept around. In a way, it was like she was saying that based on all the work that she's done outside of Drag Race, she's deserving of getting the crown. And honestly, there is a small amount of truth to what she's saying. Don't get me wrong, I don't think at all that a queen should win a show because of how she performs outside of it. Yet it is important to at least acknowledge that Latrice really did, even to this day, have a pretty impressive career. So it's fair that from her perspective, she was deserving of having a crown that represented that. Unfortunately, in terms of fan perception, it only began to annoy people even more, who were getting the feeling that she was being a little bit grandiose. Which is funny, cause like, drag queens are sort of meant to be full of themselves, so it's crazy to see people act shocked. But I guess it caught a lot of people off guard since up until this point, Latrice had more so shown her chilled back version of herself. So this was a new side that people were getting to witness, and it was Latrice truly as a competitor and not 
just as a miscongeniality. Now, despite everything, for the most part, she pretty much ignored any of the fans that were complaining about her online. And honestly, rightfully so. She's such an established queen that is already so confident in herself. So it makes sense that she doesn't care at all what other people think about her. Something that is super commendable. All Stars has always been a double-edged sword. We've seen in almost a decade of All Star seasons that it can either make you or sometimes break you. With stories like even Pheromone, who was the second queen eliminated, would go on to speak about how it was one of the most difficult times in her life given how much money she had invested into her runway package. In that same respect, if Latrice had never come back to All Stars 4, to this day there would probably still be people wanting to see her get a return. Yet how do you think a 2024 Latrice Royale would do in let's say a versus the world season? Now, when Latrice was first eliminated on season 4, she thanked RuPaul for changing not just her life, but the world of drag forever. In that same way, Latrice was part of the building blocks of the Drag Race universe. She inspired the generation of queens that would go on to lead the phenomenon of Drag Race today. I mean, the legend of Latrice Royale goes beyond just this video, and honestly, I do hope to one day be able to interview her so she can be inducted into the Interviewed by Green Gig Hall of Fame. Which, by the way, you can find all four of my collaborations with Pangina Keels, Aja, Bible Girl, and Mini Cooper on a brand new playlist I made. It'll be linked in the description. Anyways, the biggest lesson that we can take from Latrice's run on All Stars 4 is that sometimes, regardless of your status, returning to an All Stars could backfire on you. Granted, Latrice being the professional that she is, was never weighed down by any of the annoying fans at all. Going on to continue touring, making money, and investing her time in those that were supporting her. Yet with that, there's no doubt that nowadays, probably due to the giant influx in new queens, we don't hear Latrice's name mentioned as much as it once was. While I don't see her returning as a competitor, I do feel she's an excellent queen to occasionally bring in to maybe coach the girls on an acting challenge or even be a guest judge. I just would like to see her involved to some degree within the Drag Race machine again. Thanks again to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to take control of your finances by heading over to rocketmoney.com slash greengate to try it for free or by clicking the link in the description. I want to take a moment to thank my patrons. In the Elite Pink Squad, we have Matthew Burns, Gay Uncle, Sari Tish, Natasha De Leon, Las Potitas, and Cool Gal Nan. And in the Green Squad, we have Cayman Rider Furry, Edgar Allan Pup, The Only Sean, IJS, Jack Beck, Not a Punch But a Keek, Captain Chaos, Bashir with the Good Beard, Galeria Gomez, Dea, D -D -D Dea, Sarah G, Scarlet Rose, Boiled Peanut, Kimberly Marin, Max Whale, and Olivia Marr. If you'd like to see your name on the screen, you can support me on Patreon. The link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. If, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because we're literally about to hit 100k. And make sure to check out some of my other content because I put a lot of effort into every single thing I upload. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.